Virgo, this is your week ahead tarot card reading by Born Without Boundaries Tarot. This is a message for Virgo energy, Virgo sun, moon, rising sign, Virgo metaconscious energy. So if you don't identify as Virgo in any way, you might have some Virgo placements in your chart that are being triggered right now. And so if you look at it and say, I'm not a Virgo, but this is for you. This message comes to you because you drew it to you and it comes to you at just the right moment. And this is where your message begins. And it's your energy. And this is be gentle, be kind, be sweet, um, be sensitive, be empathetic, be compassionate. This is also something new, something just beginning, something that's on shaky legs. So it's tender. It's almost like dealing with a baby. If you think about Bambi and that scene where he was just born and he's just trying to stand up and he's shaking and shaking. He's almost shaky legs. So something is on shaky legs now, not because it's inherently weak, but because it's new and it's vulnerable because it's new. So being delicate and being gentle with this situation or with this person or with this job, whatever this is, and you'll know it when I speak about it, you'll be thinking about it immediately. So it's tender. You know it is because it's new or because it's just tender. Maybe it's just healing. You know, there's, it's trying to get its strength and it certainly has the capacity for strength. We know where Bambi ended up, right? He ended up as the prince of the forest, but there's just this sense of it's so new and tender now. It's not just a fawn, it's a doe. It's it not just a doe, it's a fawn. It's new, it's sweet, it's elegant. There's grace here, which also says, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself so that you can go on and make better choices, do things better, see things in a better light, treat a situation or a circumstance better. This is compassion and grace. And let's see why you're being called to that energy. Virgo, I'm going to split the deck and whatever cards come out, I'm going to just leave them where they lay because it's going to be part of the reading. If you're looking for personal readings, I do provide those and you can find those over on my website. You can book and schedule at your convenience, www.bornwithoutboundariestarot.com and you'll get your video within 24 hours of whatever day that you've booked because I know you guys want your messages and I'll get them to you. I'll get them to you pretty quickly. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and then ring that notification bell so that you know when I upload your favorite content. As well, if you click that notification bell and say all notifications, you'll also be notified when I go live. And I go live here a couple of times a week, definitely one for the public to do public free tarot card readings. So if you want to participate in that, then please do subscribe to the channel and ring that all notifications notification button. And then if you'd like to become a member, you can get access to members only live chats. I'm almost done. You're going to hear a bell. But I'm going to ring it to cleanse the energy and then we're going to proceed.
Virgos, happy birthday. And I should have said that last week because we've already started Virgo season, but happy birthday. And I wanted to point out that there was a beautiful and very powerful new moon that just happened on September 2nd or 3rd, depending on where you are in the globe. And if you are Virgo 2, so if you're born between, say, September 1st and September uh, 11th, this would be a particularly powerful new moon for you because the, the moon would have been conjunct your natal suns while it was conjuncting the current sun. The current sun, therefore, was also conjuncting your natal suns. And your natal suns sit in opposition to where Saturn is currently. Now, that can slow you down, make you feel pressured, make you feel energy drained, but allow it to slow you down, especially since I believe Saturn's in retrograde right now, too. Allow it to slow you down, and it can also show you purpose and discipline. And the new moon in particular for you guys would have offered a beautiful new start, a beautiful chance to heal or plant the seeds for long-term success or something that required long-term commitment that could grow to something that's beautiful. But because it's in opposition to Saturn, that new moon would also require that you take things slow and that you do them right. And there would be an exceeding amount of discipline required. But at the end of that, say by the full moon in Virgo during Pisces season six months from now, there will be beautiful results that could be yielded. So just so you guys know, especially Virgo 2s, but all of Virgos, this was a particularly powerful new moon for you. It's still very much impacting you because the sun, the sun is still conjunct your natal sun and you still have that opposition to Saturn. Basically, this whole year, Virgo 2s, to really challenge your patience with yourself, your patience with your world, and challenge to see if you are disciplining yourself um, well enough, if you are meeting as high expectations as you're capable of. So if you want to know why you're being challenged, it's because Saturn is in opposition to your natal suns all this year. FYI. Okay, so let's, let's go with what we have here, all the future which means the past has cleared, but something is on shaky legs. It's new, it's tender, and it's going to need your patience and your compassion, right? Like Bambi's mom didn't rush him, hurry up, right? So this was a sense of let it be on shaky legs, let it be new, let it be vulnerable right now. And then we have let it shine. You need to say something or talk about something this week. You need to let people know or put a spotlight on it. Let yourself shine. Let yourself be seen. Let your voice be seen. Let your feelings be heard. Let let it out. Let it be seen. Peacock energy is resurrective. It's, it's akin to Phoenix energy. So this is scorpionic energy. Um... But there's this sense of air about it because it is bird. So there's a sense of communication is necessary right now. Let something out. Bring it to light. Let it be known. You are ready for this. And this is your first step on being heard, telling, telling the truth, um, getting something off your chest. It would be truth associated since this is resurrective. This could be um, related to a second chance, a new beginning, starting over, or uh, something that you had to get off your chest and then spirit has your back. This is Capricornian energy. This is also, this is also, so it's solid. It's, it's Saturnian energy because it's Capricornian energy. It's, um, it's disciplined. It's saying that, guess what? Spirit has your back on this. It's, it's the rules, the laws, the regulations, the ability to execute and execute with quality. All of those things are on your side right now in your wheelhouse and in your capacity as well. The great spirit is on your side here. It's guiding you in this direction. Um, trust it and also honor it. So this is, you have to be humble in front of great spirit. That's that's what uh, Eagle Totem it is directly related to. You have to be humble in front of it. You have to be honest. You have to be pure of heart. Nothing will work if you do it with negative intentions. Um, so there's just this sense of 
the personal authority inside of yourself, this, the discipline. It could also mean government approval. It could also mean authority figure approval, something like that. So let's, let's get deeper into it by doing the seven day play by play. I'm going to break down in seven days or seven steps, however it rolls out for you this week, how everything occurs, Virgo. And I'm going to draw day seven. Oh, this is Capricorn, okay. Day seven, you might be dealing with a Capricorn. Days, oh, there's a lot of fear involved. It's a lot of fear involved. So I wouldn't be so hard on yourself that you become afraid. You're going to have to beat back your fear. We're going to go over how this relates to everything and how this entire situation ends up. But let's first start off with day one. Virgo, what is all this about? Queen of Swords, uh, plotting the way forward. She's my GPS card. So when she comes up, this is about being objective intellectually objective and not getting emotional not that she's unemotional she's but she keeps her emotions in check and she just sees the way clearly she sees logically she's very fair she's very straightforward she's very to the point you could be dealing with a female air sign or this could represent you since you are ruled by mercury a sense of kind of pragmatism and logistics the way forward how do i move forward oh you have divine counterparts here um, a fair choice of how to move forward, also a clear, fair decision of what is right and what is wrong. That to me says this is a really good start to the week because your momentum is very, it's very fairness aligned, it's very even, it's very balanced. Um, also speaking to somebody who is on your equal level, equal communications, um, being fair and talking, speaking with truth about a situation that you've been stuck in, perhaps for a year, um, perhaps just to clarify things, perhaps um, there was a situation that you were just stuck about or you were trying to grow about. It's almost like now you're realizing that you have to grow because this is like a cocoon shape. The hanged man is about seeing something from a different point of view is going to help you um, clear out the situation, get the answers that you need and have the most successful communication with whatever you're speaking of or whoever you need to talk to right now. What about day two? Walking away from what doesn't serve you. You were fed up with something. You were around this new moon realizing I don't want something anymore. I'm finished. Um, certain emotions that I may have had are done and over. Um, I don't care about a certain situation anymore. I'm ready to move on, right? It's almost like apathy, a sense of I'm done. It doesn't serve me anymore. So ready to move on around the new moon and you made a decision and it was a good decision and it was divinely guided to start over again, to be resurrective, to come back to life, to uh, be chosen or selected for something or be given another chance because you've gone through the fire and made the right choices. There's a purification energy here. Virgo, and this would be your energy. This could be about another earth sign. This could be about a feminine earth sign, Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus, somebody who is very good at managing things, very good at doing everything for everybody else, very giving energy, um, um, and to finish up the cycle. So it's almost like you just made a decision to finish up a cycle with a job, a manager, or managing too much giving too much or with another feminine earth sign, a sense of, I need to finish this up. It needs to be completed. I really need to be done with this now. Moving on, moving on to the next cycle of your life, uh, opening up the door. You cl you're finishing out one cycle and you're opening up a new one because you're, you're finishing, you're, you're closing up. So what about day three? Or step three, depending on what timeline you're on.
uh, you have to make a choice. This is a decision to move forward and move forward in a different direction. And you have this sense of you've been looking at this direction. You've been desiring this. You've been wanting it. You knew that it was right, but you weren't exactly able to let go. But now the world is your oyster and you're open up to different experiences. You may have your eyes set on a particular, a certain one. And day three would be around the time when you're ready to open up and take that step forward. Day four, choose to move forward. Maybe choosing to move. There was disappointment. Facing a, a past disappointment, something in the past that you wish you could take back, something in the past that really hurt you. Something in the past that you hadn't let go of or or you know, or just needing to face it and confront it. Because check this out. This is what I love about the Five of Cups. If you see them, they're looking at, sometimes this is called the don't cry over spilt milk card. Like it happened. You can't do anything about it. It's done. It's over. Turn around and you see you still have two cups left. Your focus is in the wrong direction. Your focus is in the direction of what you lost instead of what you could gain. And what you could gain is two of cups. So you go from losing something that's social, something that's like party fever, maybe friends or friendships or, or something that is more generalized to something that is very specific, a unique bond, perhaps that's the two of cups is between you and somebody else, the sense of you may have been a good time, but it's in the past. Turn around and look at the beauty of a connection or an opportunity or something fulfilling that is actually still there for you because there is something still there for you. What about day five? Day five is Piscean energy. So we do have Saturn in Pisces. It's your opposite energy. So it's like balancing yourself out with your, your pragmatic side, or sorry, your logical side with creativity, with the unknown. This is kind of something mysterious or something veiled, something that's being hidden. What is being hidden? This is also, once again, new moon energy. What's being hidden? Because this is not a time to hide stuff. Clarify the moon energy. What was being, this is usually emotions that need to come out. Or somebody's feelings or actions that were being veiled. Right? It could be deceptive energy, but it's upright. So it's not necessarily malignant or malefic. Um, there's not necessarily malice behind it, just... Two of swords, you don't know what to do about a situation. So you haven't made a decision about it or somebody hasn't made a decision about it because things are unclear. Okay. This was the new moon. Maybe you weren't sure. Maybe you weren't sure of your feelings or you weren't sure how to speak of them or you feel like you were trapped between a rock and a hard place because of things that you had hidden or things that were hidden or just confusion, right? So what should Virgo do? Make a decision. Make a choice. Decide. Decide over the situation. You know, decide based on your faith. Because Pisces is... The only way you can get through the nebulous of Pisces is with faith. That's the only way. Because words don't make sense. So trying to make sense of this won't make sense. You've got to choose and decide with faith. That's, that's the only way you can. What should this decision be? Opportunity or to extend an offer of opportunity to open yourself up to the, in other words, think of the best case scenario because the universe says you have the chance of the best case scenario. So don't be scared. You know, even though it's nebulous, even though it's a little bit confusing, there is a beautiful opportunity here. Um, and then we move on. Oh, geez. You were worried about something. And I actually like that these cards came out. You were really worried about something. 
maybe it's with a Taurus, but there was a lot of worry here. There was a lot of worry, maybe pain, illness, sickness, right? Something that, something that it's almost like you, you knew you loved, you knew you cared about. Um, maybe wanting to make a commitment or wanting to make a commitment to somebody or an actual commitment or opportunity being extended to you, maybe from somebody in the past, somebody that you've loved a while or talked to for a while or haven't heard from for a while, but still think about, but there was a lot of stress. There was a lot of suffering. There was a lot of pain. So it's something like on the sixth day, you kind of have to confront this. You, you kind of have to confront this, even though it scares you, even though it's worrisome, even though, or if somebody is still in pain, there's a sense of um, showing them love, showing them compassion, showing them kindness, or showing them um, maybe even self-forgiveness here. Um, let's get into the moon card because it's very important energy right now before we get into day seven. I'm going to go over to the extended to cover day seven. Adjustments are required. So there are changes. Maybe feelings have changed. Maybe emotions have changed. Or simply put, in order to move forward, you do have to make adjustments. And this is a part that you have to accept. Accepting it. And maybe you were scared. You're scared that feelings have changed. Or you're scared, can I adjust the way that I need to? Well, fear is never a reason to stop. You're only halfway there, but you are halfway there. So there's just this sense of, yes, make the changes, especially if you know what's making you suffer or what's hurting you the most, where you need to forgive yourself or somebody else. Let's go over to the extended, guys. I want to know what this is all about. We're going to get into day seven and continue this reading there. The link is down below in the description box. I've also pinned it to the top of the comment section, or you can just head over to my channel on Vimeo, Born Without Boundaries Tarot on Vimeo. And I'll see you guys there.